Okay, Grace, are we, I should have asked you a minute or so before, but are we recording now? We are not. Um, Is Herb having difficulty getting in or then we know? Herb's not on yet. No. No, I, I haven't heard. Are you able to give him a quick call, Grace, just to see? Sure. Oh, here he is. He's joining now. Great. There he is. We won't be able to live stream tonight. I lost my, um, my, I got a new computer and I lost my uh, code. So we are recording it and it will be on, um, we will put it on our, on our YouTube channel tomorrow, if that's okay. Okay. Okay, hi Herb. Hi Joel. So we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, is there any declaration of a pecuniary interest in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none, we have no delegations this evening. I'll ask the clerk to do a roll call, please. Mayor Nowak? Here. Councillor Nair? Here. Councillor Vandermas? Here. Councillor Wagner? Here. Councillor Smith? Present. Chief Administrative Officer Rick Luigi. Here. Chief Building Official Daryl Denny. Here. Director of Public Works Chris Cook. Here. Director of Recreation Danny Rowe. Here. Director of Planning Jeff Vandebaren. Here. Treasurer Teresa Bish. Here. Fire Chief Paul Redman. Paul's not here. And I'm Grace Kosh, Municipal Clerk. Committee Advisory Chairs, Wellesley Recreation Committee Chair, Jeff Quint. Here. And Lori Seven. <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem here. Linwood Recreation Committee Chair, Lori Seven. Thank you here. And did you get Bev? Oh, I'm here. There she is. Sorry. Heidelberg Recreation Committee Chair, Bev Vector. Present. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Grace. We'll move right into Recreation Committee. Uh, Herb, this is yours. Okay. Thank you. Rec 2020, minutes of the previous meeting, November the 10th. Can I have a mover? Anybody's hand going up? Peter, seconder, Shelley, discussions? All in favor? Carried. Service uh, board reports. Uh, Lori, let's start with you. Okay. Um, I really don't have much to report except just to uh, thank council and staff for their uh, efforts and support of the fireworks display on Friday. It probably would have been easier to cancel when we had uh, some difficulties, but I think this event will give residents something to look forward to during these uh, crazy COVID days. So thank you for going to bat for us. Any questions for Lori? Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Uh, Bev, how about you? Um, we are trying to get community spirit up, so we are doing a Santa Claus parade this coming Saturday, the 12th of December, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, and Santa will be touring the village on the main roads, 
um, I shouldn't say that, main roads within the subdivisions, not on Cressler or Lobsinger, because we are afraid of causing too much of a disturbance. Um, social distancing will be in practice. And uh, we have a Santa and Mrs. Claus coming, and the children can get their picture taken beside the trailer with parents taking the picture. And a treat will be handed out. Um, then that night we are having a house decorating contest and there'll be a prize awarded to top categories, um, most elegant, best light show and most creative. And I wanna thank Mayor Nowak for taking part in judging this with Mayor Shantz of Woolwich Township. And um, we have prizes for those three from local businesses. And our new playground equipment was installed in the middle of November and they um, opened it up to the public at the end of November. And basically that's it. Thanks, Bev. Anybody have any questions for Bev? No? Okay, let's go on to Jeff. You're muted, Jeff. Okay. Yep. So uh, first I would like to uh, thank uh, Mayor and Council for uh, moving forward with the fireworks. I think it'll give uh, the community good spirits and we're happy to support. Um, on the Wellesley Rec Board, I just communicated to Danny that we do have volunteers that are uh, willing to uh, move forward with an outdoor rink this year. So we'll coordinate with Danny on the boards and how we do that and managing that. So it's good that we have interest. Um, it was a, there was a quick response there and we've, We've, we've got an, another couple of bodies that are interested in, in helping with the, the rec board. So it's, it's been a good latter half of 2020 for, uh, for Wellesley because there hasn't been a lot of, uh, a lot of interest. Um, Grace, thank you for, for sending along the uh, home show inquiry for 2021. Um, given uh, the times now and where things could potentially go, I, I, I am... I'm not optimistic that it will be a 2021 home show. Um, even if you're down into a green zone, it's very limited uh, the amount of people that you can be indoors. And I'm really not interested in, in having that kind of liability and, and having to police it because if in green, I believe it's 50 indoors. Is that correct, Danny? So if you had 50 indoors and you have 30 vendors, that means you could allow 20 other people inside. That's uh, it's a pretty limited event. And I wouldn't, if I was a vendor, I wouldn't be, too interested in participating given the limited bandwidth. So uh, it, it may be something we have to forego for, for 2021 as well. Um, just uh, given the times that we're, we're facing and, uh, and whatnot, but it is what it is. Thanks, Jeff. Any, anybody have any questions for Jeff? Okay, let's move right along. Uh, Sean Heger, is he, is he part of this? I see a name here. With Who's the press. Pardon? He's the press. Sean's with the press. Oh, okay. I wasn't too sure whether they whether it was somebody else that uh, from another area. Okay, let's move along then. Uh, service board of staff reports. Uh, Danny. There's no staff reports tonight, but I do have a, a short director's report. Directors. Just move into that. All right. Uh, with Waterloo Region now in the red control zone, we have lost some ice rentals. Uh, the only current rentals we have are our minor groups, with the exception of a few one-off rentals. Uh, only the minor groups are receiving the reduced rates as passed by council. We have had uh, one other group uh, ask, but uh, I didn't feel it was something that we should be bringing forward. It was an out-of-town group, so I didn't think that I would bring that one forward. Uh, as Jeff uh, indicated, uh, outdoor rinks will be permitted this year. There will be signage up with the COVID-19 restrictions that are in place. There will be no games or scrimmages permitted and only a limited amount of skaters on the ice at a time. Uh, the, uh, with the, where the rinks are in Wellesley and St. Clements, at least the, the smaller rinks, uh, we're looking at around 12 to 14 people at a time that could be on the rink based on the based on the how many square meters squared you need per, per, per participant. Uh, so 
uh, any of the rec service board chairs want to are interested in the rinks this year, please contact me. Uh, Jeff and I were in contact today about this. So in January, uh, in January 2000, 2021, a report's going to be coming to council asking for direction on the next steps of the Wellesley Township Recreation Complex. So that uh, you can expect that report at the January committee meeting. And last, the Wellesley Arena will be closed from December 21st till January 3rd this year. Our minor hockey systems, both the girls and the boys system, are taking a two-week shutdown uh, over that time frame this year. So I'd be happy to take any questions, but that's all I have for tonight. Carl, Carl? Uh, what's staff going to be doing uh, at the Wellesley Arena? For those two weeks, uh, there will be take, there's, we have quite a bit of, quite a few holidays booked in that time. <laughs> so we've, uh, recreation staff are taking uh, an allocation of their vacation time in the month of December, and they've chosen to take it during that time. We will have some maintenance that will be done, but uh, the majority of the time will be uh, booked off in vacation. Any other questions for Danny? No? Okay, thank you, Danny. Uh, next is the accounts, uh, the financial statement. Um, any questions on the accounts or financial statements? Bearing none, that's the end of my, my part. Okay, thanks, Herb. Um... Uh, no planning and development, no road and bridge, no property and fire this evening. We have admin and finance. Joe? Uh, um, Joe? Yes? Can we just take a moment to thank the chairs for all the work that they've done this year? And Absolutely. It's been, a, it's been a very difficult year, and, and maybe there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, physical activity, but, um, you know, kudos to each of you for everything that you continue to do for your communities. Yeah, we agree. Do you know how to do the hand the hand thing on this thing? Thumbs up. There you go. Well said, Shelley. Okay. Um, move to admin and finance. Uh, the first one, AF and P, is uh, records management. But I believe Amy uh, Heron is going to make a bit of a presentation first. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Grace, can you confirm if you can see my presentation? No. Oh, there it is. You can see my presentation now, Joe? Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Okay. So this presentation is to provide an overview of records management in the Township of Wellesley, uh, utilizing the Tom Room system we purchased at the beginning of this year. We'll start with an overview of general records management. As you can see, there are four definitions here. These are the main terms used when discussing records management and should be understood by users to ensure records are identified correctly. I'll just briefly discuss these definitions. Uh, records management is the systematic control of corporate records throughout their life cycle. Information created or acquired as a vital business asset and knowledge resource to support effective decision making. A corporate record is information produced or received to provide evidence of a business transaction, regardless of form or medium. For example, a corporate record can be in the form of an electronic document, print document, text message, or any other form of medium. A transitory record can also be considered temporary records. Some examples of transitory records are draft copies of a document, casual communication with colleagues through email and training brochures. 
non-transitory records are corporate records. Examples of non-transitory records are election records, contracts and agreements, and bylaws. This slide briefly highlights the benefits of, of implementing a records management system. A cor corporations manage records to protect their most valuable asset, which is information. Good record keeping practices support effective decision making, protect the reputation of their corporation from litigation, provide guidelines necessary to dispose of records accordingly, support the effective use of resources for the management of physical and and electronic records, improve search and retrieval of records when required, and assist the corporation when responding to privacy requests in a timely manner. Corporations have an obligation to ensure that records are authentic and reliable, accessible, complete, compliant, protected, and secured. As you can see, there are several principles that MFIPA is based on with the overall theme of protection of information and access to information when appropriate. Municipal requirements. MFIPA requires that municipalities protect the privacy of its residents. This means that personal information must be protected, including the collection, use, disclosure, retention, and destruction of records. MFIPA compliance. Without proper record management programs in place, municipalities will have problems finding applicable records required in order to respond to a freedom of information request and locating the personal information in its custody in order to implement measures to protect it. Our Tom Room system was purchased earlier this year. The Tom Room system provides a classification structure to organize municipal records paper and electronic. It improves search and retrieval of information to support effective decision-making, response to information requests and litigation matters, and supports disposition of records that have reached the retention period. As you see in detailed in our procedure manual, the following is the process to managing corporate and transitory records. So managing a corporate record, once a document has been identified as a corporate record, it is subject to the retention period as detailed in the records management schedule. The dates detailed in the records, the retention schedule are legislated retention periods. Staff will also be managing an internal retention schedule for extended retention periods as requested by the department head or as recommended by outside agencies. All forms of a corporate record are subject to retention. Printed corporate records are to be organized by classification category and stored in a labeled folder and transferred to labeled storage boxes until final disposition. Electronic records are to be filed in the same format, labeled under the appropriate category on the Tom Rim server until final disposition. Managing a transitory record. Once created, transitory records typically have a limited value and should only be retained for a short period of time. Regular disposal of transitory records will make daily operations more efficient, reduce clutter and storage space requirements, and facilitate search. If recorded information has only short-term value to an organization, it will not be required again after the, and will not be required again after it is obsolete. It may be disposed of immediately after use. If recorded information is expected to have some future business financial, legal, research, or archival value, then it should be retained as a corporate record. When in doubt, treat the information as a corporate record. Any transitory paper record that contains personal, personal health, or confidential information must be destroyed securely. Record destruction. When inactive records are transferred for long-term storage or designated for long-term electronic storage, Signing authority for final disposition remains with the department originally responsible for creating or receiving those particular documents. Inactive records will not be destroyed, deleted, or reclassified without sign off and approval from the originating department. So we are currently in the stage one of implementation, which is to revise and modernize our policies and bylaws. 
In stage two and three, we'll be introducing the Tom Room system to staff and providing training. Stage four will consist of ongoing support as each department implements the program. The final stage is five, and at that point, we can expect for staff to be fully trained and capable of navigating the classification structure as retention periods come up for review and destruction of documents occurs, there is no end date to our implementation. We will continually be adding documents to the classification structure and destructing documents as retention periods elapse. Our next steps. So upon council approval of the records management program, staff will begin to set training dates by department and begin stage three of implementation. Staff and council will receive a complete package of program documents as reference material as we move forward with the program. Some final thoughts and highlights. So when managing records, begin your record, begin your document evaluation by identifying the record as transitory or non-transitory. If transitory, determine value and dispose of as required. If non-transitory, review the retention schedule and prepare the document for appropriate classification code filing. Annually review records for elapsed retention periods and arrange for staff destruction. Um, some highlights, corporate records can be in any medium, print, email, text message, or any other recorded format. And all staff, including council, are responsible for the documents they prepare or receive. So this concludes my presentation. Um, if there's any questions, I can take them now. Okay. Questions? Peter. Yeah, not a question, um, but uh, I'm happy to see the uh, the presentation and that. Uh, Can't hear you, Peter. Pardon? Having trouble hearing you. Maybe it's only me. I don't know. Well, my mic, my mic is on, so. Anyone else having? I can hear them. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's okay. just me then. No, I just want to congratulate staff on taking this as forward thinking. I think it's going to make everything move uh, more smoothly. And uh, it's nice to know that we're facing the future. Good work. Any other questions for Amy? Councillor Schmidt has his hand up. How are we for space for record keeping? We got still lots of uh, room. For electronic or paper records? Both. Both. Um, paper records, we do have a bit of storage left in the basement. Um, I think once we start implementing the Tom Room system, we'll be able to eliminate some of the paper records that we do have at the basement. And I believe as far as electronic records, we essentially have unlimited storage. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So, you know, Amy, if I sometimes make a statement, you know, a message from the mayor, that sort of thing, uh, those are the types of things I believe Grace keeps on file. Is that, are those required to be retained? Those aren't required to be retained um, based on just communication value alone. They, I believe they're retained at this time just for reference material going forward, but that is something that can be destructed okay. after use. So emails, if I, if I forward an email to uh, Grace, I don't know, with regard to a complaint or uh, some issue uh, with, uh, you know, in the township, that's something that has to be retained? It is. Uh, that is something that has to be retained, and that would be subject to um, a retention period as detailed in the retention schedule. So, and that goes for any, uh, any member of council? Correct. Yeah. Okay. okay, any other questions? I'm going to ask you to I can uh, read the um, on my laptop. I think I can read it better than on the on the uh, on the uh, 
computer. Um, Amy, if you could close that off. Amy, I'm going to stop participant sharing. Okay. okay. Thank you. There, there we go. go. Okay, so no more questions. Well done, Amy. That's a lot of work put into that and uh, very well organized, much appreciated. Um, we will go to, so it's A, F, and P uh, 35, 2020. And the recommendation is, is that the council of the township of Wellesley approve records retention bylaw, including schedule A, records retention schedule and procedural man manual 2020 and policies as attached to report A, F, and P 35, 2020. Uh, moved by. Councillor Smith, second by Councillor Nair. Any discussions on that? All in favor then? Well done, Amy, again. Thank you. So we would move to AFNP file number 36, 2020. And the recommendation is that the Council of the Township of Wellesley approve the following persons to be appointed to the Grand River Accessibility Advisory Committee. GRAC for a four hour, uh, four year term ending December 31st, 2025, pending ratification by the partnering municipalities. Uh, from Wellesley Township, we have Jolene McDonald, uh, Trevor Tamlin from the city of Kitchener, Teresa McQuillan from the city of Waterloo, and Brad Sales, Township of North Dumfries. Uh, yeah, North Dumfries. Um, can I have a mover for that, please? Moved by Councillor Weyer, second by Councillor Vandermas. Any discussion on that? All in favor then? That's carried. Just um, bear with me. I was trying to figure out what mice most to use. You got two of them going here. So the next one is uh, AFNP 37-2020. This has got to do with the Grand River Conservation, uh, Conservation Authorities Act. Um, I'll read it. Uh, I might have a comment right after it. Um, so the recommendation is, whereas the province has introduced Bill 20, uh, 229, Protect, Support, and Recover from COVID-19 Act, Schedule 6, Conservation Authorities Act, and whereas the legislation introduces a number of changes and new sections that could remove and or significantly hinder the Conservation Authority's role in regulating development, permit appeal process, and engaging in review and appeal of planning applications to manage watershed natural resources and ensure people and property are safe from natural hazards. And whereas we rely on the watershed expertise provided by local conservation authorities to protect residents property and local natural resources on a, on a watershed basis by regulating development and engaging in reviews of applications submitted under the Planning Act. And whereas the changes, changes allow the ministry a minister to make decisions without conservation authority, watershed data and expertise. And whereas the legislation suggests that the minister will have the ability to establish standards and requirements for non-mandatory programs, which are negotiated between conservation authority and municipalities to meet local watershed needs. And whereas municipalities believe that the appointment of a municipal representative, representative on conservation authority board should be a municipal decision and the chair and vice chair of the conservation authority should be duly elected. And whereas the change changes to the duty of members contradicts the fiduciary duty of the Conservation Authority Board members to represent the best interests of the Conservation Authority and its responsibility to the watershed. Whereas conservation authorities have already been working with the province uh, development sector and municipalities to streamline and speed up permitting, uh, permitting, permitting 
and planning approvals through Conservation Ontario's Client Service and Streamlining Initiative. And whereas changes to the legislation would create more red tape and costs for the conservation authorities and their municipal, municipal partners and potentially result in delays in the development approval process. And whereas municipalities value and rely on the natural habitats and water resources within our jurisdiction for the health and well being of residents, municipalities value the conservation authorities' work to prevent and manage the impacts of flooding and other natural hazards. And municipalities value the conservation authorities' work to ensure safe drinking water. Now, therefore, be it resolved. And I'm reading all this because um, it'll, it'll come to light in a minute. But uh, so now, uh, be it resolved that the province of Ontario work with conservation authorities to municipalities to address these concerns by repealing Schedule 6 of the Budget Measures Act, Bill 229 that the province of Ontario delay any enactment of clauses affecting municipal concerns and provide them at a minimum of 18 to 24 months transition period so that the changes can be appropriately, appropriately incorporated into both municipal and conservative authority budgets. That the province continue to work with conservation authorities to find workable solutions to reduce red tape and create conditions for growth that the province respect the current conservation authority and municipal relationships and that the province embrace their long-standing partnership with the conservation authorities and provide them with the tools and financial resources they need to effectively implement their watershed management role. That this resolution and copy of the Grand River Conservation Authority report proposed amendments to the Conservation Authorities Act, Bill 229 be forwarded to the Premier, the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks, Natural Resources and Forestry Municipal Affairs and Housing and Finance, all opposition leaders and opposition critics, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, the Rural Ontario Municipal Association, local MP and MPP and all municipalities and conservation authorities in Ontario. So I'll first ask for a motion to support that. Um, Councillor Smith, second by Councillor Vandermas. Uh, does council have any discussion on that? Carl. As you're probably well aware, I passed third reading this afternoon. Uh, that's uh, what I was going to mention. That's why oh. I um, I wanted to um, you know let let council know that uh, that was the case. Um, I just have another comment. Like uh, this bill two twenty nine that comes up uh, out as protect, support, and recover from COVID nineteen act. What, what, how did this all work that way? Are we going well, back to the way we were before, after we figured out COVID-19 or what? No, and it's hard to figure out exactly how the government manages. I think if I understand it correctly, and I, um, I think it's, it's embedded in an omnibus bill. So it's a huge bill that has a lot of uh, different aspects to it. And this is one aspect that uh, caught the attention of conservation authorities. So um, how they rationalize it, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I wanted to read this. Each of the, uh, uh, the lower tiers in the regional water do uh, send a very similar uh, uh, message to the province. And uh, I think for all intents and purposes, it, it was ignored. There was a few, few minor things that uh, that they were able to adjust on our behalf, but uh, uh, the bulk of it uh, was not. I don't know, Jeff. Um, I don't know if Jeff would have any comments on that. Jeff, have you been able to see how that would um, affect us? Um, uh, I haven't had a whole lot of discussion with my colleagues about what this might do. Um, I think one thing it will do is it will actually make more work for the municipality. Um, because we will, we have the potential to have to take on some of the role that the GRCA has now uh, been doing on our behalf. So I don't know, there's a lot of, uh, there's no regulations out, of course. Uh, so we don't know exactly how this will be implemented. That's another concern. Um, yeah, those are my two comments, I guess, for now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. And uh, I know there's been pushback, but um, so I, I'm just, if I still have any voice left, I want to read uh, uh, 
just a couple paragraphs from uh, the GRCA this, uh, that just came out not more than an hour ago, an hour and a half ago or so. Um, so I'll read this here just, just for councils to be aware. So while the government took consideration some of the uh, feedback by making revisions to section six, schedule six involving board governance and the ability for conservation authorities to issue stop orders, unfortunately, these changes don't completely address our concerns, says Helen Jowett, who's GRCA chair. Many amendments made to the Conservation Authority Act through Schedule 6 remain unchanged, such as those that remove and are significantly hinder the Conservation Authority's role in regulating development. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry will have the ability to make decisions on permit appeals and issues and issue permits without watershed data and expertise from the Conservation Authorities. Further to this, a new section was added to Schedule 6, which will require conservation authorities to issue a permit when the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing issues a minister's, a minister's zoning order. In addition, conservation authorities and landowners, as landowners, will not be able to appeal most planning decisions that affect their lands, even though the conservation authorities are the second largest landowners in Ontario. So that full uh, statement is on the GRCA uh, um, uh, website if, if, if you wanted to go to it, or maybe we could uh, bring it up for information uh, at the next meeting, uh, Grace, just so people are aware. Anyway, um, I think we should uh, still send this note um, along with the, uh, the other municipalities, but um, I, I got a feeling that there won't be any backtracking on that. So I'm, uh, any other discussion on that? So we'll call a question, all in favor then? And that's carried, okay. So, um, so we have AF&P 3820, investing in Canada infrastructure program, ICIP, COVID, uh, yes. The recommendation that the Council of the Township of Wellesley direct staff to apply for 100,000 of funding under the Investing in Canada Infrastructure, infrastructure Program, ICIP, COVID-19 Resilience Infrastructure Stream for upgrades to the St. Clemens Arena roof with the balance of the funding for the project to be taken from the Recreation Facilities Reserve. Move, could I get a motion to Councillor Wagner, second by Councillor Vandermas. Any discussion on that? No questions for Danny? Danny, I just, if I could, I'll just, just want a bit of clarification for, for council on this. I think it's fully supportive, obviously, of, of, of this move, but uh, you mentioned, I think, in some discussions that it's it's maybe a year or two before you would have uh, had to do something similar. Is is that my understanding? Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, we do have it uh, identified in our uh, internal ca uh, ten-year capital budget forecast for 2023, and that is as a result of the of the 2018 AECOM report uh, for the building assessment of the St. Clements Arena. The roof was not identified as a as problematic, uh, such as the Wellesley Arena was, but it was something to keep an eye on, as it was the same coating that was put on that roof that was on the existing roof of the Wellesley Arena before it started to fail. So uh, there was no issues with this. This is a preventative maintenance. Uh, uh, we we're very happy with the with the work that was done in the Wellesley Arena. So we just thought this was a good way to offset the cost of doing a job we did have forecasted for two years down the road. So we would receive a 10 year guarantee on that as well? Uh, it, would all, it would all depend if on, uh, on what uh, coding we went with. Uh, it will have to go through a tender process. Uh, but yes, uh, we would be looking at something that does give an, that does give a warranty on it for sure. Any other questions? I'll call the question. All in favor, then? 
That's carried. I didn't ask for opposed. Information uh, agenda. Are there any items on that information agenda that uh, council would like to discuss further? I'm seeing none, I'll need a motion to receive the information agenda as presented. Moved by Councillor Nair, second by Councillor Smith. All in favor? It's carried. Unfinished business? Other business? Nope. nope. Councillor Vandermas? Thank you. Um, I would like to bring up uh, the use of the, uh, the new rec lands. Um, Danny has already introduced the idea in a, an email to us about something happening in January. I would uh, like to uh, just get council's feedback or at least initiate some discussion of using some of that land before it gets fully developed. What I have in mind is a, um, a disc golf course they're portable holes. They're just posts with chain link on them and a basket. Um, they can be uh, placed just about anywhere. Uh, you just can stake them into the ground and take them out when you have to move them. Um, it would make good use of the land. It would uh, keep it in the public eye. And, uh, you know, in the year coming up, we may need stuff like that for people. Uh, so I'd just like a little bit of feedback. Uh, if there's enough interest, we may ask uh, staff to do a bit of a report on it. Okay. Danny, do you do uh, something that we could look into? <clears throat> yeah, yes, definitely something we could look into. I would defer to our CAO on this as there is a uh, the land is currently rented for agricultural use, and I and I can't speak to what the terms of that agreement are with the the farmer that does rent that land. So I'll, I'd defer to our CAO on that question. Sure, I can uh, quickly give a little update on that. So we the land is rented out for the remainder of the year. Um, that lease agreement does come to an end, and a new one has been mailed out uh, for next year's crop. So I'm not sure if we're looking at the entire uh, 32 acres of open land and if it would be long-term or if it would only be for the winter months and we'd go back into renting it out as farmland next year. So that's something the council would have to discuss, I think. Okay, well, maybe we could, uh, uh, Peter? Yeah, I don't envision it taking up all 32 acres. It's something that, that we could really put just about anywhere on the periphery or or through parts uh, that are uncropped. Um, you can have any number of holes. So it's not an 18 hole kind of thing. You can go with nine holes, you can go with six holes. You know, so there, uh, there may be a lot of area that uh, is not uh, agriculturally viable and we can, we can throw a couple of these uh, nets up there. So it's, I like the idea because it's very versatile and they take advantage of leftover land, so to speak. Becoming a little bit more popular too. I think um, actually the Conestoga golf course is, uh, offers that and they're offering it through the winter as well this year. Okay, well staff has a bit of direction to look at that at some way. Carl? Uh, it's not new business, but it's business. Uh, the St. Clements Plaza is now fully rented. Uh, the IDA opened, drugstore opened yesterday and there's a coffee and tea establishment that serves uh, dessert sandwiches and stuff right uh, where if anybody remembers where the old gas station was right in the very uh, west corner of the plaza facing Obsinger. and a uh, little birdie told me that the santa claus is also coming to linwood on friday night before the fireworks oh uh, that's good to hear that's, that's all I got. Thanks, Carl. What time is he going to be there? Do you know? Is he Apparently, there? he's just uh, going around town, uh, same thing, probably on a wagon or something like that, just oh. doing the subdivisions. That, that'd be during the day or just in the evening, or you don't know? I believe it's shortly, like 6, 6.30 before the fireworks. Okay. 
Okay. So I can, Joe, I could update on that a little further. Um, Santa Claus will be going around, I believe at six o'clock with the firefighters doing a food drive. And then he will also be attending at the fireworks event just to drive up and down the rows to wave to the children in their cars. Sounds like a fun time. Anything else? No closed session. Um, Councillor Wagner, motion to adjourn. All in favor? Carried. Have a good weekend. Um, can we just, is, do, do we have an invite for Monday on our calendars? I haven't checked, but is there an invite for Monday for the uh, budget? The Zoom link? Yeah, did we get it? I will make sure you have it. Everybody has it. Nope, yep, I think we did. Yep, looks like it's there. Yeah. 9 a.m. Peter, you're enough to get your mic fixed before then. Can't hear you. You're muffled sounding. Yeah, well, it's this stupid surface I'm using from my employer. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I stopped using mine because my keyboard is doesn't work. So <laughs> is there anything else? <laughs> okay, have a good evening.